as a sign of hope. This candle reminds us of the prophets like Jeremiah who have come before us, proclaiming your words of hope and light in times of darkness. O oh God, you are the source of our hope, and you are faithful to all your promises. Fill our lives with hope, Emmanuel, God with us. Shine on us, O oh God of justice, guide our path through gloom of night. Bear within us wisdom's glory, come to us, O oh Christ the light. O God the Father, creator of heaven and earth, have mercy upon us. O God the Son, redeemer of the world, have mercy upon us. O God the Holy Spirit, sanctifier of the faithful, have mercy upon us. O holy and blessed and glorious Trinity, one God, have mercy upon us. Remember not, Lord Christ, our offenses, nor the offenses of our forefathers, neither reward us according to our sins. Spare us, good Lord, spare thy people, whom thou hast redeemed with thy most precious blood, and by thy mercy preserve us forever. Spare us, good Lord, from all evil and wickedness, from sin and from the crafts and assaults of the devil, and from everlasting damnation. Good Lord, deliver us from all blindness of heart, from pride, vain glory, and hypocrisy, from envy, hatred, and malice, and from all want of charity. Good Lord, deliver us from all inordinate and sinful affections, and from all the deceits of the world, the flesh, and the devil. Good Lord, deliver us from all false doctrine, heresy, and schism, from hardness of heart, and contempt of thy word and commandment. Good Lord, deliver us from lightning and tempest, from earthquake, fire, and flood, from plague, pestilence, and famine. Good Lord, deliver us from all oppression, conspiracy, and rebellion from violence, battle, and murder, and from dying suddenly and unprepared. Good Lord, deliver us by the mystery of thy holy incarnation, by thy holy nativity and submission to the law, by thy baptism, fasting, and temptation. Good Lord, deliver us by thine agony and bloody sweat, by thy cross and passion, by thy precious death and burial, by thy glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Ghost. Good Lord, deliver us in all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death, and in the day of judgment. Good Lord, deliver us. We sinners do beseech thee to hear us, O Lord God, and that it may please thee to rule and govern thy holy church universal in the right way. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to illumine all bishops, priests, and deacons with true knowledge and understanding of thy word, and that both by their preaching and living they may set it forth and show it accordingly. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to bless and keep all thy people. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to send forth laborers into thy harvest and to draw all mankind into thy kingdom. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to give to all people increase of grace to hear and receive thy word, and to bring forth the fruits of the Spirit. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. 
that it may please thee to bring into the way of truth all such as have erred and are deceived. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to give us a heart to love and fear thee, and diligently to live after thy commandments. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee so to rule the hearts of thy servants, the Presidents of the United States and all others in authority, that they may do justice and love mercy and walk in the ways of truth. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to make wars to cease in all the world, to give to all nations unity, peace, and concord, and to bestow freedom upon all peoples. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to show thy pity upon all prisoners and captives, the homeless and the hungry, and all who are desolate and oppressed. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to give and preserve to our use the bountiful fruits of the earth, so that in due time all may enjoy them. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to inspire us in our several callings, to do the work which you give us to do with singleness of heart as thy servants, and for the common good. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to preserve all who are in danger by reason of their labor or their travel. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to preserve and provide for all women in childbirth, young children and orphans, the widowed, and all whose homes are broken or torn by strife. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to visit the lonely, to strengthen all who suffer in mind, body, and spirit and to comfort with thy presence those who are failing and infirm. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to support, help, and comfort all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to have mercy upon all mankind. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to give us true repentance, to forgive us all our sins, negligences, and ignorances, and to endure us with the grace of thy Holy Spirit, to amend our lives according to thy holy word. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to turn their hearts. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to strengthen such as do stand, to comfort and help the weak-hearted, to raise up those who fall, and finally to beat down Satan under our feet. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to grant to all the faithful departed eternal life and peace. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to grant that, in the fellowship of all our saints, we may attain to thy heavenly kingdom. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, Son of God, we beseech thee to hear us. Son of God, we beseech thee to hear us. O Lamb of God, that takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us, O Lamb of God, that takes away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us, O Lamb of God, that takes away the sins of the world. Grant us thy peace, O Christ, hear us. O Christ, hear us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. 
Let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake in your presence, as when the fires kindle brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to the adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountain quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you, whose works for those who wait for him. You bet those who, glad, who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry, and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean. And all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our inequities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father, we are the clay, and you are our potter, we are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O oh Lord. Do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 80, verses 1 through 7, 16 through 18. Let us say this by half verse together. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock, Shine forth that you are enthroned upon the cherub. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, Amasa, stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angered despite the prayers of your people? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given the bowels of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors, and enemies laughed at us. Store us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Let your hand be the man of your right hand, the son of the man you have made so strong for yourself. And so we will never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Shed your light of your kindness, and we shall be saved. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. 
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way that you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, In those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near, at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour no one knows, neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. O oh, come, thou wisdom from on high, who orders all things mightily, to us the path of knowledge show, and teach us in her ways to go. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. What I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. If you're at home, you can sit down, too. <laughs> I was once talking with a college student uh, about her experience of mental illness. She was telling me about her experience of mental illness, and she was describing what it's like to feel so depressed that you can't get out of bed in the morning. And then she thought and she qualified that by saying, now, I know a lot of people probably have trouble getting out of bed in the morning. 
After all, beds are comfortable, the world is not. Beds are comfortable, the world is not. And those uh, simple but profound words have stuck with me over the years uh, as speaking to the reality of uh, the difficulties of human life. Sometimes it's just difficult to get ourselves up and going in the morning because beds are comfortable if you have one. The world is not. And so it is sometimes difficult to wake up or to keep awake. It's easier to uh, stay in, sometimes even to stay in darkness or to stay in warmth or to stay in comfort. But if we stay there, in that comfortable, dark place, we miss the possibilities of the day. We miss the opportunities that God brings us when we go out to face the world, uncomfortable though it may be. So it can be difficult to wake up, but it is also the way that we find and experience life. And this season of Advent is about waking up, about keeping awake, about watchfulness. We pray and read on these coming Sundays about keeping awake, our Lord saying that he will come again, and so we have to be awake in order to meet him. We anticipate his coming again to meet us and wake ourselves up to that reality. And as we move towards the end of the season of Advent, we anticipate the celebration of when he first came among us and of those who were awake enough to see him then. So this season of Advent encourages us to wake up and to keep awake. But this time in our world, this time of a pandemic, is also waking us up to a number of realities. They are uncomfortable realities, many of them, but they also open up to us possibilities and opportunities of new life, of a new day. Many of us in this season of pandemic, under the restrictions that we face during it, are waking up to the reality of being alone. Those of us who live alone in our households uh, aren't able to gather with our friends or our extended family or our church as we are used to doing, as we might want to do. So we have to be with ourselves a lot more. And that can be a difficult reality to face. This is a time of loneliness and even isolation for many people. But one opportunity there is that it reminds us that that is a reality for many people all over our world, whether or not there's a pandemic going on. For our sick, for our shut-ins, for those who are in prison, they always have to face that feeling of isolation. And so the opportunity here is to remind the rest of us about that reality and to serve them better when we can with phone calls or visits or prayers. But also the opportunity in that time of loneliness or even of isolation is to enter into the joy of solitude. That is, if you are feeling lonely, if you are missing your friends and family, use that time also to experience time with God. Enjoy that silence and draw fruit from it. Experience solitude coming from loneliness and listen for God speaking to you in that solitude. On the other hand, many of you are not feeling particularly lonely, but you are learning what it is like to be around your family members all the time. And I know that that can be a difficult reality to face. Uh, there was a video that came out in the spring when, um, when COVID start, first started uh, spreading intensely across the U.S. and people were facing some lockdowns back in the spring. There was a video and it just showed a man's head and he was listening to a voice on the phone. And the voice said, because of the coronavirus, you will need to quarantine. You can either A, quarantine with your wife and child, or B, and without listening for the explanation, the man said, B, I'll take B. And maybe that's how some of you feel. I don't know. I can't speak to that directly. Uh, but 
uh, that can be a difficult reality to wake up to. But again, it also presents us with some possibilities. While some of you may feel like you're driving each other crazy, I have also seen in my own extended family and in this congregation, people rediscovering what it means to be a family. Not just individuals living under the same roof or sleeping under the same roof, but a family that works together and prays together and lives together. That's a real opportunity that's come out of this time, and I've seen that happening already with some of you. On a national level, this pandemic is waking us up to injustices that have already been here for a long time. This disease disproportionately affects people in poverty and people of color, and disease always has its own preferential option for the poor because health and medicine are not given the same to all. That's causing a lot of pain and a lot of suffering for a lot of people, but it can also wake us up to the realities that were there in the first place, and perhaps it will encourage some of us to do something about them, to work for justice in our community and in our nation. At a global level, this pandemic has awakened us to our relationship with the planet, to non-human life. Back in the spring, when societies all around the world began to close their businesses and their borders because of the spread of the virus, the air began to look cleaner, the water began to be clearer, animals began to re-emerge in places where they hadn't been for generations. And when it takes a global pandemic that disrupts human society and threatens human lives for the rest of the planet to be in better health, that needs to disturb us a little bit. That needs to wake us up to the reality of our relationship to non-human life on this planet and to ask the questions, how does what I eat or how I travel or how I work affect other living beings? Perhaps this is an awakening for us to rediscover our place in God's creation, not as overlords, but as caretakers. It is not easy to wake up, but waking up also brings with it possibilities and opportunities. If we awaken to the brokenness of this world, we may also see the beauty of God. Christ is coming again. He is coming. We meet him in our solitude, in our loneliness. We meet him in the members of our family who are with us every day. We meet him in the poor and the oppressed. We hear him speaking to us in this fragile and wounded planet. He will come again to judge the living and the dead, and whether we meet him now and are ready to meet him then depends on our wakefulness. It is not easy to wake up. But if we wake up and keep awake, as Jesus said, we will see the possibilities of the day. If we look to the suffering in the world around us, we will see the possibilities for redemption. If we take a good, hard look at the cross, we might see through it to the resurrection. If we see the brokenness of this world, we may also see the beauty of God. How are you waking up in this time? And what possibilities does the new day bring for you? Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life, in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, 
when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal. Through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now let us affirm our faith in our Lord and his church in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he came incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Have mercy upon us, most merciful God. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Thank you. 
years, yet feel that presence throughout the earth today, for Christ lives in all Christians and is with us now, again on arriving that Christ brings liberty. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and grace. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs of him, in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 God, ruler almighty, heaven and earth are full of your glory, glory be to you, O God. Blessed is the one who comes, who comes in the name of God. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let us pray. First, the prayer for spiritual communion. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. And since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you 
and you in me, in this life and in the life to come. Amen. And now the post-communion prayer. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated, whether you're here or at home. Uh, thank you once again um, for joining us this morning, uh, for those who are watching at home, and thank you to those who have come in and made this service possible. That takes a crew of people each week that you don't always see, so be sure to thank them in person and to thank God for them. Uh, I certainly do. Um, as you may have seen uh, in the weekly newsletter, uh, our diocese has informed us that they uh, are suspending indoor worship through January 1st. So that means we will continue with this uh, for the time being until they let us know further. Uh, it's hard to plan too far in advance these days, but we know that at least through Advent, we will be doing this, live streaming our 8.30 service, so keep tuning in and uh, keep showing up if you're a part of the crew that is here uh, doing this with us, and we'll be, those of you know who you are. Um, Christmas Eve, we will let people know, okay, we're working on creative ways to worship for Christmas Eve, and we will let you know those well in advance, okay? Um, I hope to say something about it next week. Uh, thank you um, to those who helped with the pie sale, or those of you who bought pies. We sold 40 pies, and uh, our youth and those who are here with us had a uh, good time making them. Uh, I hope you enjoyed them, for those of you who took them home. So thank you for that. Um, we have a garden work day planned for Saturday, December 5th. That's this coming Saturday. Uh, we have a a few projects we'd like to work on out here in the community garden so we can do that safely, um, you know, with our masks on and working with our distancing in place. Uh, if there's not heavy rain, that is, we will be gathering this Saturday at 9 and working until probably about noon. So please join us if you can. If you look outside, if you're in Lusby and you look outside and it's heavily raining, don't come, you know, especially if it's storming. If there's a drizzle, we can work with that. If you're not sure, give me a call. Um, but otherwise, if, it's, if the weather looks decent, we'll work from 9 to noon this Saturday. Beginning next Sunday, a week from today, uh, we will be uh, gathering with our children, for those who would like to come, outside. So if you're missing Sunday school and wanting to participate in that uh, with your children, uh, we'll gather outside behind uh, Smith Hall at 10 a.m., so after we live stream the service, we'll gather just for a short time with our children for some time of um, being together and uh, sharing stories. Uh, that'll be just a short service for children and their parents if they come. So that's 10 a.m. on Sundays, beginning not today, but a week from today. Did I miss anything else, those of you who are here? Walk to Bethlehem, right? I know what this means now. Um, walking to Bethlehem, uh, we're continuing to encourage people in our walk to Bethlehem, that is to record your steps, uh, whatever activity, exercise you do, record your steps and send them in to Dale Yo, um, and uh, we'll add up those steps of our congregation and try to equal the number of steps it would take to get us to walk to Bethlehem from here. So that's just a way to encourage people to stay active uh, at this time. Thank you for that. Anything else? Okay, please join us in the closing hymn.